Francis, a medical student, a part of the Faculty of Medical Sciences of the University of the West Indies Mono Campus. And I am Jove Taylor, and we are here to talk about spinal cord injury. The global incidence of spinal cord injury is 23 cases per million, 40 cases per million in the United States, 19 cases per million in the Caribbean, and 16 cases per million in Jamaica. It affects predominantly the young male population in their reproductive prime. Spinal cord injury can be a drastic and devastating change impacting an individual's patient health. It also affects their reproductive, sexual, and social well-being. I am Oshane Murray. I'm 25. My spinal cord injury occurred about five years ago, and uh, I was doing cheerleading. I was doing practicing some backflip routines and my leg slipped on one of the routines and I fell on my head and my neck snapped and injured my spine at the same time. Socially, at first I never really wanted to go anywhere but you know when you have those type of friends that draw you out no matter how much you want to stay home. Yeah, so after a while I get over my social anxiety get more confident. I'm back in school, pursuing a, a degree in engineering. Neurogenital complications of a spinal cord injury include those to the urinary tract and the genital system. Those that affect the urinary tract are bladder dysfunction, urinary tract infections, kidney stones, renal impairment, and the vesicourethral reflux. Those affecting the genital system are infertility, erectile, and ejaculatory dysfunction. Your bladder functions in emptying and storage of urine. Spinal cord injury affects your ability to control your urine. You may have impaired sensation of bladder fullness, urgency, and frequent need to urinate. Also, the inability to hold your urine for long periods of time. But most commonly, you may not be able to empty your bladder at all. Urinary tract infections. Infection of your kidney, bladder, and tubes that allow passage of urine commonly become infected with spinal cord injury. It can result from persistent use of indwelling catheters, residual urine, and kidney stones. Treatment options. At first, I had the catheter in my penis and it was causing a lot of, over time it was causing a lot of problems, uh, infections. So the doctors decided to change the area which it was placed. I got a super pubic, Im a super pubic implant where that's, this is where they have a small incision right in the bladder. And uh, with that I don't experience as much as much infections. Uh, treatment, no, the treatment, I change it once a month. And uh, if there's a problem, I don't usually get symptoms, but if there's a problem, I would usually get, um, get antibiotic. Kidney stones. You can develop stones along your urinary tract associated with infection immobilization and indwelling catheters. Poor kidney function. Over time, your kidneys may no longer function normally from repeated infections and kidney stones. To be honest, when the injury just happened and I didn't know how bad it was, because when I fell, I was laughing. And this is when I was trying to move, I couldn't move. And the first thing that dawned on me or went in my mind was, I'm going to miss training, to be honest. How your urine flows into your bladder may be impaired, with some of it going backwards. This may predispose you to upper urinary tract infections and poor kidney function. Erectile dysfunction. Your ability to have firm, long-lasting erections long enough to have sexual intercourse may be affected and this occurs in a high percentage of males with a spinal cord injury. Relationship-wise, um, at first it was rocky, and then it was just up and down for that. Sexual-wise, it was more of experimenting. Ejaculatory dysfunction. With reaching your climax orgasm, 
you may see little to no semen being released. Male infertility, a combination of things such as having a poor erection and poor semen quality can impact on your ability to impregnate your significant other. In terms of erections, uh, this one, at first, I didn't really understand that. Uh, let's see, erections. First time I experienced an erection, I didn't know. When I found out about it, the doctors told me I had what you call autonomic, autonomic erections where the slightest, uh, slightest what, what, stimulation will cause an erection. In terms of maintaining it, that I talked to my urologist about that and she would, she normally offered drugs that I could try, which I've been trying. Appropriate bladder management can help keep the bladder and kidneys healthy, free from infection and other problems, and improve your overall quality of life. Management of urogenital complications can be divided into those of the urinary tract and those of the genital system. Those of the urinary tract include clean intermittent self or assisted catheterization, suprapubic catheterization, contained urinary incontinence using penile sheath system or pads for short, and anticholinergic such as the drug oxybutynin and tolterodine. Management of the genital system include pharmacological agents, sildenafil, also known as Viagra, Vardenafil, also known as Levitra, Tadalafil, also known as Cialis. Vacuum constriction devices, intracavernosal injections, penile vibrator stimulation, electro ejaculation, sperm harvesting with assisted reproductive techniques, intrauterine insemination, and in vitro fertilization. The steps involved in self catheterization include first, washing your hands well with soap and water collecting your supplies, including your catheter, open and ready to be used, a toilet or other cleaning or wiping instrument, lubricant, and a container to collect the urine if you're not planning to sit on the toilet. You may use clean disposable gloves if you prefer not to use your bare hands. The gloves do not need to be sterile unless your provider says so. Move back the foreskin of your penis if you are uncircumcised. Wash the tip of your penis with betadine. Apply the KY jelly or another gel to the tip and top two inches. With one hand, hold your penis straight out. With your other hand, insert the catheter using firm, gentle pressure. Do not force it. Start over if it is not going in well. Try to relax and breathe deeply. Once the catheter is in, urine will start to flow. After urine starts to flow, gently push in the catheter about two more inches. Let the urine drain into the toilet or special container. When the urine stops, slowly remove the catheter, pinching the end close to avoid getting wet. Wash the end of your penis with a clean cloth or baby wipe and make sure the foreskin is back in place if you are uncircumcised. Wash your hands with soap and water and clean the outside of your catheter. For the vacuum constricted device, place the pump over the penis. Pump the air out of the cylinder so that a vacuum is created. Once the penis is erect, with the help of a lubricant, slide the retaining band down onto the lower end of the penis and remove the pump. All these management options are offered here in Jamaica. My life now, I've explored these options. Um, to be honest, I, it's, it's, it's just the same to me. Because before I got the options, I, as I used to experiment. Uh, with these options, I have more more options so my life is kind of so it's all right stable 
I have nothing more to say, no, nothing more to complain about. All I can say to anybody who's been going through this is don't give up. Um, this is just the beginning of something bigger. Uh, maybe it happens in a wrong time of your life or abruptly, but it's not the end. If you have a goal or a focus, you can still do it if you want to. Just be you and believe in yourself, regardless of your walking or not.